Okay, folks. Book it out. So um, I apologize up front that this year will not be as organized as I want this year to be because there is so much stuff. I'm going to talk about your cat company, and there is just like endless material, tons and tons of material. So I just collected, and we'll see how far we get. There's no way I'm going to cover it all. Um, but I want to just start by reading the relevant lines. You, have, you really have to go back a couple of seeking before the actual bracha in order to understand what's going on. It says, Vayedaber Hashem el Moshe lemur, like that. Daber el Aharon el Banav lemur, Kotevachu et Bnei Yisrael amur lehem. Yivarecha cha Hashem v'yishmarecha, Ya'el Hashem v'nav elecha v'tineka, Yisa Hashem v'nav elecha v'yisem l'cha shalom, Samu et Shmi al Bnei Yisrael v'ani ava. Okay. You may have noticed I was going one, two, three. Um, the word emor and variations of it mentioned three times in the introduction. And those, so there's a lot of discussion about that. Before we even get to the, I don't even know if we're going to get to the text of the Brahma itself. Let's start with this. So Rashi says, we always start with Rashi, right? Rashi says this kind of cryptic comment. He says, Shamor Vizachor, that it's Amor, that's Amor Lahem. Like Shamor Vizah. Okay, what does that mean? So the Sisei Chachamim on Rashi is that um, just as Rashi taught about um, number one, that, that it just like Shamor Vizah means you have to like remember Shabbos all the time. Not like Zahor, what does it mean, Zahor? Don't think of it just on Shabbos, you have to think of it all the time. So, in the same way, he's saying you have to be thinking about the bracha, you have to be feeling the, bra the effect of the bracha all the time. Um, remember it always. That it references like permanence, constancy. Okay. That's one comment. The other comment is Amor Lehem, say it aloud so that everybody can hear. Great shot, right? And number three, Amor, why is it written Malay? The first two are written without a Vav. And the third one is written with a Vav, Amor Lehem. So he says, that means take your time. Don't do it hastily, like it's full, do it full, do it like with a full heart, with a full presence, with full intent. <laughs> um, and don't do it hastily, do it the Kavana. A more behind mm -hmm. like Shamor, Zahor. Mm -hmm. So most of the time it's just written out and Resh. But in right. this instance, it's right, all of and fabric. Okay. Um, so the, the other word that a lot of talk about is the word ko, ko to draw food. Thus, you should bless them. Um, so Um, okay, so there's a story about Rabbi Akiva of Obin, who, uh, he came to Prague, he was one of the, I guess he came from Spain to Prague, I don't know, and he had 12 sons and 13 daughters, and he was a Kohen, and so he married his 12, 12 of his 13 daughters, to, also to Kohanim, and when he would go up on the and the Bima to Duchan with all his sons and his wow. sons in laws, wow. the 12 of sons and the 12 sons in law, and him made 25. So, wow. what's 25? Ko. Wow. So, he got to fulfill Ko to Barfu. <laughs> That's his name? 
Reb Akiva of Oven. Oven. And so he, he and he, 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 he was the, he was related to the Shlach Kodesh. Like one of his daughters married the father of the Shlach Kodesh, who was a lady. So that, that I guess that's the thirteenth. <laughs> 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 he was busy. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. okay, so there's more on Ko. Um, Midrash Rashi Rabba says, "Why do we merit to have the Birkat Kohanim? Because of the fact that Hashem said to Abraham, 'Ko liyazar echad.'" Thus, your, thus, their children. Thus, your children will be in creation. Thus, your children will be like. I think it was before the bracha, the stars of the sky and the sands of the sea. That 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 word ko is in that bracha. So that's why we get the bracha ko to bracha of Israel with the bracha of Um. And Rabbi Nachemi says, also because of Yitzchak, because when they were going to the Akeda, it says, Hanar, Ani v'hanar, Ne'acha Adko. I and the boy will go Adko, to here, to there. But it's Adko, so we get it. We merit it because of Yitzchak. And then um, uh, Rabbi Man, you know, the, the nameless rabbis, said also because of Yaakov, because it says, Ko Tomar Lebet Yaakov. Say Ko to Beit Yaakov, which is the women, right? But in this context, it means all the Jews, because all the Jews get the Yerkat Gahan. Okay, and one more on Ko from the Baal Haturim. Um, he also brings the same midrash from uh, Rishi Raba about Ko, but he also adds Ad Ko Bach Berach Berachani Hashem in Yehoshua that Yehoshua says Ad. I'd come, I'd go. God bless me. So, okay. Then what's co? Co equals 25, as we said. And there's 25 letters in the Shema. So it references the Shema. Um, the word, the concept of bracha is mentioned 25 times in the Shema. Wow. And the concept of shalom is mentioned 25 times in the Shema. I didn't count them personally. That's all? Yeah, I also I also I used to see it again. And then I said, the place in the US has Koi is Shkina. Then it says, Koi, Koi means Shkina, right? So, um, sorry, I brought the here. Like there's pages and pages and pages of this, but I'm sure that's what I mean. So, um, so they bring the pasuk. This was supposed to what you say. They bring the pasuk from Shir Hashirim. It says Hashkifa min Hashemayim. What is it? Hashkifa min Maon Kachicha min Hashemayim. Vara et Amcha. That God is looking down from heaven and blessing the people. And they, that that's from Tivarim. And then they said, um, so so. Knesset Yisrael said to Hashem, why do we need your Kat HaKolonim? We have your bracha. Like, what do we need an intermediary for? All? Your bracha is enough for us. <laughs> um, so, 
We don't need your bracha. And it's enough for us to be blessed from your, directly from your face, you know, to be As it says, hashkifu memon kachecha, it says, you're going to bless us. Amar lahem akadosh baruch hu, God said to them, even though I told the Kohanim that they're the ones that should bless you, I stand with them and bless you with them. I sort of got them up. They spread their fingers when they do the bracha. So that Hashem of the Shekhinah can peek through their fingers. So there are places where the minhag is not to wear a tali, but most people, most places, put a tali over their head. Why? So that we won't be blinded by the light of the Shekhinah. Now, that was in the Beit HaMikdash. Now, like our Hashem of wearing sunglasses, we can. Although we but, but we still work. retain the impact of covering, covering the kind of covering their faces with the colleagues. Um, I wanted to say I know someone who saw the line. I mean, he took Kogan. He wasn't that very good for me. And he was looking. And he said that he. <laughs> <laughs> Can you repeat the question? Did you hear it? Oh, she just said she, she knows somebody who said that he actually saw the light of the He was a coin Dr itself. Yeah, so who was a little kid? Didn't like peek. Just to <laughs> right. see. For sure. For my Abba. No, right. And, and a, <laughs> lot of, a lot of fathers put their children under the talus with them when they did their talus with them. Okay, and as it says, when they bring the proof text from Shir Hashirim, he names the Omed Achar Kavleno. Here he's standing behind behind the wall. Mashkiach mina chalonot, he's peeking out the window. Metzitz mina chalakim, and um, peeking out of the cracks. So the ha chalakim means five spaces. So. I always thought it was like this, but apparently it's supposed to be like this. So they have one, two, three, four, five spaces. One, two, one, two, two three, three, four, five. One, two. No, they count that this is one. This is one. Because oh. even like this, it would be four. Well, you, but these two counted as one, one here. I don't know. I'm glad okay. to ask Paul. Paul Haney does it because it's not. There's a whole description in the Mishnah, but I don't. I couldn't understand. Um, okay. So then, uh, I don't have enough time. Anyways, maybe I'll have to do another because I have a whole bunch of stuff from Tamayam and Hagi. Why we do different things and how everything adds up, like the. I talked about 25, but there's also 15 word, letters in the first bracha and 20 in the next and 25 in the next, and they make a whole total of 60. Um, anyway, so she's giving me the time sign. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I just wanted to. Um, after all this learning, I wanted to sum up by saying it, it occurred to me from what we did on Shavuos that he talked in that book about two retort, two covenants, um, the covenant of the Avot and the covenant of Sinai. The covenant of the Avot was a personal one-way covenant that Hashem bestowed it on us. It didn't require any reciprocal action on our part. And that the covenant of Sinai was a reciprocal. I put up some conditions and we had to fulfill the conditions and we put up some conditions and God has to fulfill those. So it occurred to me that the Birkat Kohanim 
kind of parallels that, that there's two sides, that Yivarechacha, um, all the portions starting with Rashi say, it means Shefa, that your um, possession should be blessed. And Yishvarecha, so they, several different places say, it's like if a king bestows money on a person, he can give them the money, but he can't guarantee that the money is going to be safe once it's in the possession of the person. So the Yishmarafa is like to take care of it. So it, it feels like the same thing to me. Like just when we say, Ana Hashem um, help us out. Ana Hashem now that you've given us the help, like that story about the guy that in the flood who is waiting for help. Yeah. So help us to do something with what you've given us. Same thing, Ya'er Hashem, God puts the light on us. Yusuneka means, Yusuneka is interrelational. Like, what's my name? Like, have pain. Okay. Have, have pain to be, have a pain. Oh, uh, have the, uh, you know. so, so that's also a relational interaction. Like do something with that light, just to have the light shine on you, and then you sit there and like a bump on a log. What good is it to you? You have to take it and do something with it. And the same with Yisar Shem He can lift us up, but what are we supposed to do with that? Shalom is also also a relational thing. You can't have shalom without somebody to have shalom with. So I. You yield. Yeah, I remember what we learned in school. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning. We heard the birds tweet twerping as you were walking. That was really, yeah, I, it, was, it, was, it was sweet. So, hi, Karen. Good job. Okay. Um, all right. So we're gonna we've been talking about the, the laws of Bona and specifically about temporary structures. Okay, which break down into two categories. We talk we're talking about um, uh, well, first of all, talking about an ohel, about about a, a tent, you know, basically, uh, and and then and then there that breaks down into two categories: tents without walls meaning like it could be like a chair with legs or tents with walls. So I just want to just do a quick you know, review of the without walls. Okay, so that, so there are a number of conditions that determine whether something is permitted or not permitted. So number, the first thing is that, um, that, um, that you're erecting something that not for the purpose of protecting something underneath. Anytime that you're putting, you know, if you put, uh, um, you know, you've got some things outside and it's raining and you want to go out and put a tarp over it. So that would be, the, uh, it would actually be the Jarabanan prohibition of, of, uh, of, of this malacha. Even if it doesn't have legs, just putting a tarp over it? Well, like putting, let, let's say putting a box over it or something. It's, it's, we'll get to that. Over what? Like, you know, just like, you, you know, you think that it doesn't really apply because I'm not going camping on Shabbos, right? But, but it, but it could come up, like you might want to cover things that are to protect them from the rain or something like that. So, um, so, if, so there are instances where a person would, would be putting up some kind of a, a structure in, in order to protect what's underneath. Even so if you're just- you were back there? Yes, it's nothing to do with carrying. It's, it's a, it has to do with the malak of moment. Okay, so that's, a sore. so that's a source. So if you're constructing something and it's only for the purpose they don't care about what's underneath, then it's fine. Okay, then so that's like like a table. You know, you don't really care. You put you're putting up opening a folding table, you don't care what's underneath. You're not putting it up to, to protect anything that's underneath. Okay, so then the second consideration is the if your if your intention is to is to protect something underneath, that's that's so the that, like issue. Right. Okay. So that's the next so point. Okay. So something. So it has to be. It has the, the prohibition. But only anything that's like directly on the surface is not a problem. If it's 
It has to be a, a minimum of a tepa off the ground, like four, four inches, something like that. And, and it has to be, its size has to be a tepa, which is not hard to get to. Um, but if it's something that's laying directly on the surface, you do not have a problem, so that's okay. Um, and then the, the, third, uh, the third consideration is something is, is made for the first, it's being used for the first time. So um, like, um, like if you have, uh, like if you have a netting for a, for a baby carriage, right? So you, you can't take this netting from your drawer and put it on top of the baby carriage. Why? Because you're, you're using it to protect something underneath. And also you're create not that it, it didn't exist before, but it, for that purpose, it's, it's first coming into, into existence. So if you actually, if it's open already, it's covering the, the carriage already for, for a, a tepa, then it would be okay. Right. So it has to be, it, it, in most cases, it has to be all of those considerations, but not, not always. Okay, so now we're talking about about things that are, um, oh yeah, so another example like is, the, is, a, is a sukkah. Sometimes people, um, people put like a, a plastic on top of a sukkah, right? These are much more in America because they have that problem, but, but in, and we, don't, we don't have rain out of season. Uh, <laughs> um, no, we are very strict, but um, so, okay, so, so if you are if if this cover this plastic cover is sitting directly on top of the schach, not a problem, okay? It might, but it has to have been opened a little bit. It has to have been like at least a tefach covering the schach before Shabbos. Otherwise, you're making it anew. If if you're putting it on, some people have like a, a frame that they put these things on because they want the rain to you know roll off. So they build so they build it so that it's more than a tefach off. Of the schach, it's a problem unless you create, you know, you've, you've, you've opened it before and it already exists. Okay, so that's that's it. Okay, so now going on talking about things that um, think things that are made with um, existing partitions. Um, okay. Um, okay, so so like this example of a sukkah is a very good example. Here's walls, right? So it it involves like there's there's a built structure, and the reason why there is, is there's more, it's a more strict case because because a sukkah is obviously a structure, something that that has that has wall that has legs doesn't look as much like a like a structure, right? Um, Okay, so the, 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 there are three, um, the, there are the three, also three conditions here, okay, so the, the, um, again, the width and the height has to be more than the tefach, right, otherwise it, it, it's, it's, uh, it's a problem, okay, it also has to be uh, made before Shabbos, same, same consideration, and, but this is different, the, the, um, the partitions have to be erected first, before, um, I'm, I'm sorry, the roof has to be erected first before the walls. How do you do that? <laughs> like, how do you do that? That's a trick. <laughs> we do the three. <laughs> so, I mean, the, you know, how often do you do this, really? But, um, so they give the example of somebody who wants to make a, make a, um, make a, like, sort of a makeshift bench. Right, so if you're if you're taking if you're putting it on um, let's say two solid blocks, so you don't have a problem, right? That's what we talked about. That that's a that's like a, a, a something without partitions, right? It's just two solid pieces without partitions. You can just put the, the piece of wood on top of it. You're ready to go. The, the, but what do you what do you do if you have like milk cartons? So milk cartons have like four walls, right? So then that's right. So even actually putting the milk carton down would be would be and with the top up would be with the bottom up. with the bottom up right we're putting the with the bottom would be creating would be would be creating an oka. Well, 
I'm talking about a milk crate. Not a sorry, not a milk cart. Yeah, a milk cart. Yeah. Sorry. What? Sorry. 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 What? Yeah. 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 So I mean, if there's no intention, it doesn't have any use. It just right because because we said that there, there's there's a greater stringency when it when it has partitions when it has walls. So a milk carton has like crates, crates, crates. Sorry, I'll never say it again. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the crate has walls essentially. So when you put it down on the ground, right, you are creating what with the, with the bottom up, you are creating an ohel. Well, if you use a chair, wouldn't it be and a chair? For a step, no. No, it's the same. It's the same. It's the same. No, you know, you're not putting anything in What? You're, you're, it, it, so that's what the man says. It's, it's, if it has, it has walls. By putting it down on the ground, you, it, I mean, like I have a step stool, right? It doesn't have, it doesn't have. The table has legs. Right. Right. Okay. The reason, the reason I said this earlier, the reason there's a greater stringency with what they call partitions as opposed to no partitions is because something with a partition appears to be a structure. It looks more, much more like, I mean, the whole reason for this whole area of, of prohibitions in, is because Chazal was concerned that people would become confused about what was, what was proper, what was being built. So they, they put a wall.
Okay, I think that's, I think that's it. You're in there. Okay. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, all right, so a few, a few announcements. Um, so first of all, uh, breakfast is, is in honor of Tanya's father, Chaim Ben Moshe, this is 70th. You wanna? I know I have no time, and I don't want to do this. So I will try to be very um, brief. Uh, my father passed away.